We know that water is an essential molecule for living organisms. We know that the average organism can survive for maybe, maybe three days without water, okay? But why is water so essential? Why is it that water is so important to living organisms? And it's not because we have it in our cells. It's not because we have water vacuoles. We have water vacuoles for the following reasons, okay? I'm gonna talk about five things that water does, and I'm gonna try and give you examples of those things, okay? So water carries out five very essential things in living organisms. First of all, it's really important to note that water does not give you energy. You cannot break a water molecule up and get energy from that. Okay? If you actually cleave these bonds, you're going to be left with a free radical, which is just oxygen by itself, and we know that oxygen does not like to hang out by itself, and two hydrogens. No energy. But where water is super important is that water is either added to or removed from molecules when we break them up into smaller molecules and when we add small molecules to make larger ones. So water is essential for a lot of chemical reactions to occur in the human body. If we look at this molecule as being a polysaccharide, means many saccharides, okay? Many actual glucose molecules. That's what starch is. When you eat that, when you consume it, what actually happens? You're, this is a huge molecule. These starch molecules can have hundreds of actual glucose individual molecules linked together. Your body cannot absorb that like it is. Your body doesn't know how. But what your body does know how is it knows how to break apart big molecules to make little molecules. So what ends up happening here is your body is really good at breaking these and cleaving. Cleaving means chopping off. Okay, cleaving these actual glucoses and releasing them into the blood, okay, for all your cells to pick up, right? If they're not picked up within 24 hours, they turn into fat, fat. exactly. So when every one of these glucoses is cleaved off, which means it goes away, well, 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 a water molecule is produced body makes it okay so your body needs it produces and it requires water molecules to go in and actually what ends up happening here is it's the reverse okay your body actually needs a water molecule to go in and break that up they go in you add a water molecule to this and it chops it in two okay so that's actually the chemical reaction there but when you're trying to make actual large molecules, so when your body's making protein, it's the opposite. You actually take a water molecule out. So water is an essential, essential ingredient to chemical reactions in the human body. Okay, making and breaking starch, or well, breaking apart starch to make and the animal version of a polysaccharide, which is called glycogen, that takes and uses water, both of those reactions. So those are both chemical reactions, water is essential. We know that blood is responsible, it's that liquid suspension that carries not only our blood cells, but it carries nutrients from the digestive system throughout the entire body. So that the cell in my pinky gets the energy and the nutrients that it requires, okay? But without actually having water as the basis for that liquid solution or that liquid suspension that is blood, you would not have the ability to bring those nutrients all over the body. 
So one of the characteristics, another one of those characteristics is that water helps bring nutrients to all of the cells. If water is responsible for carrying all nutrients to the cells, what else do you think it's responsible for carrying away from the cells? Not bacteria, waste. So water is not only responsible for bringing nutrients to the cells, but the water that surrounds the cells is in charge of collecting that waste and getting it away from the cells. Because if it doesn't go away, it's toxic. All right? When your body is overheated, all right, when your body is too warm, it's fail safe to cool itself down because we are our organisms that must remain at a set temperature. If our body temperature goes too high, a lot of the molecules inside us, they get misshapen and misformed, they don't work. If our body temperature goes too low, different actual systems start to shut down. So when the body is too warm, because when you start moving your muscles, if you are an athlete, okay, or even if you're in gym class here, you start moving your muscles, movement creates heat. Kinetic energy turns into thermal energy, okay? So what ends up happening there is the body has evolved a way to regulate its temperature by perspiring. So we actually use water to help regulate our temperature. Okay, so this little diagram of this, the arm of a, a little man, okay? Now, if that person gets warm or overheated, that person is going to perspire. I'm going to put a little layer of water here on this person, okay? He's not going to sweat like that, but that's going to help kind of show you what I mean. So what ends up happening here, when we perspire, yes, we are losing water. Okay, we are losing water, but that is not, losing that water is not going to make your body temperature go down. What ends up happening here is the water that coats the surface of your skin gets exposed to actual little like, wind currents that come and they hit the actual water like this. Even if you're not moving, okay, if you're just standing here like this, water or air is circulating around you. All right, you can make air circulate a lot more by doing this. You can feel it against your face as you fan yourself, okay? But by doing that, that cool air is going to hit that moist layer on the skin and it's going to cool it off. It's going to bring the temperature down. That is the point of sweating, all right? Your body is designed to basically cushion your bones because your bones are structurally hard substances. And to have bone on bone rubbing, all right, at all of your joints would cause the bone to wear down. And if you're somebody who is your age, you might not be done growing. You may be able to make more bone. But if you're somebody who is my age, your ability to make new bone and grow, not so much. Okay, yes, I can still make new bone if my bone breaks, and I do constantly make new bone to replace dead bone cells, but in terms of wearing of bones, okay, you don't want that because A, it's excruciating, and B, you would wear down your bones, and it would make movement very, very difficult. So water is used to actually lubricate, now water and, and connective tissue. It's not just water, okay? But you've got water that separates anytime you've got bone coming into contact with another bone. So we say that water lubricates, okay, different joints throughout the body. So a lubricant is something that makes movement easier, less friction. All right, if you've ever gotten a ring stuck on your finger and somebody tells you to put dish soap or butter or something or oil on your finger to try and squeeze it off, it's because you're trying to lessen the amount of friction there. That is what water does 
in the case of bones. So when we look at what water does, water is like one of the simplest molecules next to minerals, okay, because minerals are just individual atoms, but water is one of the simplest molecules that we actually take in, but it does so much, all right? Water truly is essential for organisms as we know it to survive. Because if any one of these things breaks down, the organism breaks down. The organism ceases to function properly. All right? So that's a really good question. A lubricant is something that is going to lessen the amount of friction. It's going to, to make friction not a non-issue. You need that because every one of your bones in your body is connected to another bone in one way or another. And if friction was an issue, A, you would overheat, and B, you'd be in a lot of pain. 